I'm Mike Provenzano, and I'm the president of Cube Rover. Um, and our aim is to make planets accessible using low-cost planetary rovers. But today, I'm not going to talk about our business that much. Um, I want to talk about the journey that led me here. And, and through that, I hope that I can show you the power of what happens when industry, academia, and government collaborate together. So <laughs> I think the best tell the story, I should go back to when I graduated from undergrad. It's about six years ago. I gave away my age. Um, <laughs> but Actually, better yet, I'll tell the story in terms of miles. Um, how many of you here are familiar with the Voyager 1 spacecraft? Yeah, that's good. I knew it was the right audience for that. Can, can you tell me what it is? You raised your hand. Can you tell me what it is? The, the Voyager 1, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's, it's the farthest object we've ever sent from Earth, and it's the first object we've ever sent into interstellar space. So at the time of my graduation, the Voyager 1 was 11 billion miles away from Earth. And at that time, I knew I wanted to do one thing, and that was to make an impact. But I don't know what that thing was. Um, the desire to make an impact has kind of been with me since I was a kid, whether it was competing in track or playing video games. But again, I didn't know what that impact was in this case. So what's the broadest profession you can possibly pursue when you have no idea what you want to do? And that's business, <laughs> so I did that. Um, I always had an interest for space, but I never realized how deeply rooted my love for the industry was until I saw the intersection of business and space. And companies like Blue Origin and SpaceX opened my eyes into that. And then the new entrepreneurial companies that followed and the energy that came with them only drew me in closer. But the problem is that with a business background, it's traditionally been kind of hard to break into the space industry. So I applied to every, every company I could find in the industry, and I was rejected by every single one. And I found that I needed more industry experience and uh, maybe a master's degree to get in. So given that I didn't have any industry experience, I, I tried. I figured the next best bet was to go into my master's program. And I was rejected by every single one I applied to. Um, they told me I need more industry experience, which, you know, is kind of <laughs> conundrum. Um, yeah, so after that, I reflected on what it was I really wanted to do. And I want to highlight, uh, I realized that the best thing for me was to actually get into an industry as close as possible and then shift into the space industry. And I want to highlight that step about reflecting because to this day, that's been the most important thing that I've done that's contributed to my sense of identity and purpose. And it's the only thing that I can fall back on are my values when things get really hard and really tough and obstacles seem insurmountable. Um, so, yeah. so one billion miles later, after getting some experience in, in industry related to it, I found myself applying again for master's programs. And this time I was accepted into Carnegie Mellon University. And uh, I was really excited. I thought that this was the next best thing I could do. And I was on my way to achieving my goals. Um, but I didn't realize how much of my journey lay ahead. Uh, so when I came here, the, when I came to Carnegie Mellon, the first two things I wanted to do, I vowed to do, were to create uh, an organization for students that were passionate about the industry to break in and connect with professionals. And the second was to get a job in the space industry. So I did everything I could. I traveled to conferences, I hosted club events, I hosted speakers, and all the while um, trying to just do my best to increase my presence in the space industry. And that's the second point I want to highlight is that Growing your own personal network and professional network is extremely important. Um, I wouldn't be standing here today if, if I didn't have help from others and people that trusted me and colleagues that connected me with other partners and professionals. And, and also, leveraging the strong university network. Uh, and I, I think that that's really important. Um, so, and the, the other point I want to make there is that, um, well, hold on one second. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, from an industry perspective, that's the point I want to highlight is that working with students is extremely important. We need to do that more. Um, there's many of us who are extremely passionate, and all we want to do is make an impact. Uh, but, and I, and I encourage you when you interview your next hires to, yeah, sure, industry experience is important, but also don't let that cloud your vision of their passion, because passion is really the most important thing. Um, so 12.8 uh, billion miles into my journey, I received my first internship offer for Boeing on their space launch system, and it was a fantastic experience. Uh, it was a ginormous rocket, uh, and I got to come back, and I was still eager as ever to contribute to the industry. Uh, but this time, I wanted to try something different, 
And I thought back to the first presentation my mentor ever gave, and uh, distinctly remember him saying that now is the best time to fail. And so I decided to do something crazy. I'd, I went out and asked a group of my four closest friends if they wanted to start a business with me. And fortunately, they said yes. Um, and then after four months of an emotional roller coaster, we did exactly that. We failed. And we learned so much. And at that same time, Astrobotic took notice. They were building a, a new subsidiary company fo uh, focused on lunar rovers called Cube Rover. And they asked if we wanted to lead it. And I said, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but uh, the two important points I want to highlight from that is the first is finding a mentor, uh, or in your case, being a mentor maybe, and uh, bringing people out of their comfort zones, like I needed. And the second point is being receptive to failure. Um, failure can certainly be an intimidating thing, but if it's executed correctly, it can be a completely transformative experience. Um, uh, yeah, and, and universities are great places to fail. <laughs> They're great environments to fail. So working with universities more uh, could be really helpful. If, if you're from industry and you have a, a really intense project that you may not, you're not sure if it'll work, then work with students who can learn and fail fast and then recover from it. And if you're from government, then maybe supporting more uh, projects like these where we can fund them uh, to support students that would work on high-intensity projects with industry could be really helpful. That would have been helpful for a lot of my, my classmates. Uh, and the Space Grant uh, Consortium is an excellent example of that. So I'm going to talk about that in a second. Uh, but when we started Cube Rover, Cube Rover is technology developed from uh, Phase 2 SBIR with NASA. Uh, and it's jointly developed by Astrobotic and Carnegie Mellon, and it leverages 10 years of robotics experience to build really small lunar rovers. And Carnegie Mellon and Astrobotic are the only team to win all three milestone prizes for the Google Lunar X Prize. But even with that technical ex excellence that came with it, there are still times where I have to reach out and ask for help, despite how fortunate I am to have such strong engineers. Uh, and the Space Grant Consortium is something that I reached out for help, and they gave it to me. And I was looking for you know, a little bit of capital to help fund a small group of interns for a year, and they gave me capital for two years to get interns on board. And I would have never heard about that if it wasn't for Pat. So thank you, Pat. And it's the importance of, again, a strong network. Um, so yeah, the, the increasing lunar interest led by NASA has stimulated a lot of economic growth for startups and private investors alike. Um, and we're really fortunate to be a part of that. And just recently, I'm really happy to announce that we've just signed an MOU with the Luxembourg government and we're going to be moving there. And it's enough resources to get us to our first lunar mission. So it's really excited. Um, and uh, I guess I wanted to say, um, yeah, and even with all that help, though, we're still a startup. And there's times where we could certainly fail. Uh, but uh, I think that in, in those difficult decisions, I look to my mentors and my partners and I leverage their help to make the best educated decisions that I can. So I guess my message here is that whether you're a space veteran or you're just starting out, or if you're an entrepreneur, or if you're an engineer, or if you're a, a man or a woman, these same principles still hold, is that you know, ask for help, prioritize your values, um, be a mentor, and fail and learn. And people have told me no. Uh, a lot since I wanted to break into this industry, and, and some still do, but the, the people that made a difference in my life and the people that continue to make a difference are the people that told me yes. And I, I think that being rejected from companies, from universities, failing in my first startup has transformed the way that I view failure. And now I see that failure is a means to success. Uh, so I encourage you as leaders in the industry to encourage communities that, that take educated risk. And, and leverage passionate minds to create new technologies and new businesses and, and new markets. And um, I got my last point. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I guess now here I am today at 13.4 billion miles into my journey, and I'm still unsure of what's going to happen next. Uh, and just like Voyager, my course is plotted, but my destination remains unknown. Um, so I guess to you, by following these principles, and thinking about those things that I just mentioned, just like Voyager, you may not end up where you expected, but you will end up exactly where you intended. Thank you.